My name is Joanne Helgeson. I am the Crime Prevention Coordinator for Manitoba First Nations Police Service. Uh, I've been in this position for 15 years. Um, our headquarters is in Portage La Prairie, and we police six First Nation communities. As a uh, crime prevention coordinator, I am a civilian member of the service, so I assist our police officers in a number of different events that, that we do um, on behalf of the police service in the communities. So as crime prevention coordinator, I'm involved in a number of activities. Um, some of the things that I have been involved with are uh, attending career fairs and health fairs in, in the communities. Um, career fairs for recruitment. We get our young people interested in policing in the future. Um, health fairs for safety initiatives and safety information to community members. Um, I'm in the schools. I'm doing presentations on what is requested by the schools and communities in terms of bullying, drug awareness, distracted driving, impaired driving. Um, presentations like those. Uh, I also assist in uh, community uh, meetings and um, planning groups and writing proposals for our uh, First Nations Police Service. We have had a summer student program for uh, about eight years uh, where we hire students from the community to get some uh, policing experience uh, at our detachment and in the community relating to crime prevention, um, as well as uh, since we do not have a dedicated First Nations uh, Victim Services Coordinator, that uh, every year we get funding through the Department of Justice Canada to run a Victims of Crime event. It is known as the National Victims and Survivors of Crime Awareness Week, occurring at the end of May. So uh, we have been running a uh, an event uh, once a year during this time frame uh, on different topics of interest to our communities in terms of victims of crime, their families, um, and we just generally do a conference and invite members. Uh, to come and to just increase their awareness and understanding. So, um, so the the topics are varied and, and activities that that I do for crime prevention, um, but the the main areas that I think has shown a lot of success for our police service is our youth programs that we have been running over the last. Uh, number of years. So we started our first youth program in 2010 in, uh, uh, in the community of Sioux Valley Dakota Nation um, and we called it the Sioux Valley Cadet Corps uh, and we had uh, at, at that point it was our initial program so there was a lot of work in planning and developing the program. Um, part of the, the, the key things with this youth program was the partnerships that we developed in the community. So we were certainly a partnership with the school, which is where the program would occur, um, and the health center um, in terms of resources and, and uh, being a partner in this, and also recreation and sports. We needed to develop a partnership with, with that. We based it on the Army Cadet program, um, the successful model of the Army Navy Air Cadets, uh, as well as originally at the time there was a, a program that came out of the uh, Carry the Kettle First Nation and the RCMP working with the elders for youth, and it was more of a community policing program. And uh, we had heard a lot of uh, news regarding Habima at that point, that they were operating this community cadet program to help steer kids out of the gang initiations and, um, and deal with positive learning and positive experience with the police. And so thus we began um, this program in Sioux Valley. 
um, which was very successful the first year. And then we took it to Sandy Bay in uh, 2011. And then in 2015, we had the program in Long Plain First Nation. Currently, we have the Sandy Bay Youth Corps and the Long Plain Explorers, both coordinated by our police service, and both are after school programs that occur once a week. Um, so the Sandy Bay has been running for almost 10 years, and, and Long Plain, we started the, pl the program before, uh, just before we initiated policing that community. Uh, prior, it was our CMP, and we had a transition. Uh, the community had a transition to an Aboriginal police service, which was ours, and uh, that school year of 2015, we started our youth program even before our members were doing their, um, uh, were stationed there in Long Plain um, in, I think it was January, February of 2016. Uh, so yes, yeah, so these programs um, initially with the military, they're based on the four R's, rights, responsibility, respect, and rules. And we incorporate them into our, uh, our work, our weekly work with the students. And we've also incorporated, we call it the three S's, which is skilled staff, supervision, and structured programming. So we have all of those incorporated in, into the programs. Um, now you see the programs, we have two that we operate and we have requests for more. Um, uh, we have a request now for Birdtail Sioux, Dakota Nation, to uh, have a youth program as well. Uh, both our youth programs, um, focus on kids in, in, in Sandy Bay, we deal with the age group of 12 to 17. So we have to deal with older, older kids. Um, in Long Plain, we go 10 to 15 years. So we have a little bit of a younger group. Um, we have um, approximately 30 to 35 that start the program, but we always uh, usually end up with a core group of about 20, 25 kids that maintain the, the, themselves throughout the whole school year, which is when we run the programs once a week after school. Um, so our program has an emphasis on sports, culture, education, and healthy living. So we try to include all of those aspects in our programming. Um, we do a number of activities relating to those. Um, so one of the things that we, we do have is a, we, in our partnerships that, that are required for these programs, we do have a partnership with Aboriginal Sport and Recreation, and they supply us with sports clinics. And so we have regular clinics with both groups in archery, in lacrosse, and more recently, badminton. So these are clinics where they, we have an instructor who comes out to the community, works with the kids. Now these instructors are skilled. They're either coaches or players. They're skilled people that work with the kids in skill development. So they, and it's usually about once a month. So, so the, uh, the youth are able to practice and improve their skills. And, and that's what we are doing with, with those, uh, those areas. Also in our youth programs, we do field trips and tours, not that frequently, but those are uh, something that, of course, the, the youth enjoy to do, um, as well as we have different presentations come in. And we do understand the kids have been in school all day, so we're not going to be, they're not sitting there listening to a presenter. It's all active learning. Um, for example, um, our partnership with the health center, the local health centers, is, is, uh, uh, is working very well. And we get the health centers to come in. And 
in terms of nutrition and healthy foods, they if they're try if they're going to instruct something like that, they'll make it into like a competition or a game or a um, like a relay race to get the right answer in terms of how much sugar is in pop and that kind of thing. So it just it goes to the next level in terms of learning. Um, we've recently had our a diabetes uh, session, and it's not just talking about diabetes concerns, but it's talking about that with the kids while they're preparing a healthy meal and a healthy snack and how you can um, actively do that and recognize how you take care of yourself and, 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 and that. So that's part of the healthy living aspect in our um, program. Culture is, uh, we do have elders and other community members. It's almost built in all the time in our program, but we do also have different um, awareness and information sessions on that from people that want to share some information to the youth in, uh, in, our, in our program. Um, and for that, it, uh, it helps us with the youth just develop a um, sense of belonging into the program, some pride, some confidence that they are a, you know, a part of something strong and to be proud of that. Uh, and uh, and learning about the history, and a lot of times they they do learn about things that they weren't aware of. Of course, as a police service, we do we do offer um, uh, the police studies aspect into the the youth programs. I mean, one of the initial reasons why we uh, decided to do the youth program is youth programming is because we wanted to build connections into the community. Um, we wanted to uh, give our members um, a place where they can actively participate with the youth um, while developing positive relationships with the youth. Um, and that's needed because really a result of this program is programming is building these connections and relationships. In, in turn, it would uh, help the youth have more respect for authority and the law, meeting our members in a different capacity in just a um, environment where they're either playing sports with the kids or they're sharing information about themselves, their choices of career, or uh, whether we have the canine unit out and doing search and rescue activities. We, we kind of think we've got some cool stuff and the, you know, we got to keep the kids interested to keep them coming. So um, we try to offer many of those things. So our uh, programs, as I had mentioned, they occur uh, once a week and after school on uh, Thursdays in Sandy Bay and Tuesdays in Long Plain. And um, part of that is to be reliable in having these programs. And we, so the kids know that on Tuesdays, we are there. And we are there on, with the exception that school is canceled due to weather. So it, we, we want to develop this consistency and reliability with the kids. Uh, we offer a uh, supervised and structured program um, that's safe, that parents know that they can send their kids to after school or they stay there after school and they will be returned home um, after we are done. It's, 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 uh, it's a program that's available in their home community. So they're not traveling into the, into the town, you know, the surrounding towns to, uh, to have a program of similar nature. So, um, we also have a free canteen and meals uh, for the kids. We have a, uh, we provide bus transportation home because we want to reduce barriers to attendance. So this is provided so they stay after school. They are returned home uh, through the, by a bus driver. And, um, and they get opportunities um, overall. We just want to try to increase um, provide them with new opportunities um, to 
meet people, to, to, to learn, to discover their talents, to learn new things, to um, be aware of services that are available for them. Um, but we all, we, we really have to keep it in a fun and engaging way. We do hire uh, youth leaders in each of the programs, and these are from the community, and they serve as mentors and role models to the kids. And so they provide supervision, assistance, um, but also motivation, uh, some enthusiasm to keep things moving because we do operate the full school year. Indigenous education um, means to me is, is uh, I think just looking from our youth programs is, is developing a youth's full potential um, in, in all areas. So, in, so having a balance of, of learning opportunities. So um, that's what I see doing in these youth programs, though I'm not an educator per se, um, but I do really understand the importance of edu education for, for um, our Aboriginal students. We, uh, um, we work with career choices for the kids as well, and, and we always offer that, in, especially in terms of our police members. In the future, I see our police service fully expanding. Uh, we are an Indigenous police service, and I see us um, policing many more communities, and I see our young people from the communities uh, applying, and uh, many more First Nations police officers, and many more First Nations professional people pursuing their post-secondary education. I see a very strong direction towards Indigenous policing. So a lot of our young people uh, now and, and I see in the future will be looking towards policing as a, as a possible career choice in policing um, their, their own home communities or uh, any First Nation community. It's just a natural fit. The communities um, want their, their own people policing and um, the young people are ready now to to take that step and um, uh, begin doing that in their communities.